Since the end of World War II, rumours have abounded that the Germans had a Japanese legion in their own army fighting in Europe. They certainly had other Asian legions in their armed forces, from Tajiks to Uzbekis to Indians. But these men had all been recruited from among prisoners of war captured on the western or eastern fronts. Japan was Germany's ally, an equal partner in war, and very far away from the conflict in Europe. A Japanese legion sounds like fantasy, doesn't it? Well, not quite. Research shows that the Germans did have a small Japanese unit during the war that served primarily on the Eastern Front, and photographic evidence of its existence has survived. So how did such a unit come into being? The answer lies not with military affairs, but initially with the business of diplomacy. The Japanese embassy in Berlin was huge, a new building created to house it following the treaties that bound Japan to Germany in the Axis coalition that also included Italy, the 1936 Anti-Comintern Pact and 1940 Tripartite Pact. Military and scientific cooperation between Germany and Japan was important to both countries, with weapons and high-tech machines going to Japan and raw materials coming in exchange to Germany. Such was the importance of the relationship that, in December 1940, Lieutenant General Tomiyuki Yamashita, later famous for his capture of Malaya and Singapore from the British in 1941-42, was sent to Europe for six months, leading a large delegation of Japanese army officers on a fact-finding mission that included meetings with Hitler and Mussolini. As with all embassies, military attaches formed an important part of the staff, and the total Japanese embassy staff in Berlin exceeded 135 personnel, many of the army and navy. The Japanese ambassador was a serving lieutenant general in the Imperial Japanese Army, Baron Oshima, and Oshima and many of his attaches undertook trips in uniform to visit the war areas, for example making inspections of the Atlantic Wall defences in France as guests of the Germans, Naval attaches were filmed and photographed greeting Japanese submarines that made the perilous voyage from the Far East to German-occupied France, or viewing new German weapons systems with a view to perhaps purchasing such technology for Japan. These official visits by delegations of Japanese army and navy officers were always made in full uniform, including samurai swords, an unusual sight in wartime Europe. Another activity involving uniformed Japanese officers in Europe was journalism. Several commissioned Japanese officers acted as embedded photojournalists attached to Axis forces on the Eastern Front. One such was First Lieutenant Sunji Sasamoto, pictured here attached to the Hungarian Second Army on the Eastern Front in 1943. These officers wore Japanese army uniforms with armbands in German or Hungarian showing their photojournalist status, not forgetting that Japan was not at war with the Soviet Union at this time. But what about the Japanese legion in the German army? It was created just after Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941. The personnel were a group of Imperial Japanese Army doctors and surgeons attached to the embassy in Berlin. Their leader was Dr. Zenguro Komori, an Imperial Army medical doctor from Fukuoka. He was head internist at the Japanese embassy. Komori was a major in the Japanese Army and received the permission of the Japanese High Command to join, along with several of his colleagues, the German Army. Made a major in the German Army, Komori and his fellow army doctors wore German army officers' uniforms with rank insignia equivalent to their Japanese army ranks. On their upper right tunic sleeves, the Japanese unit wore a special Rising Sun badge to indicate their nationality, probably the rarest of the National Legion badges issued by the Germans in World War II. The Japanese unit's task was to go to the Eastern Front and study combat trauma, operating in field hospitals and base hospitals just behind the front lines, reporting their findings to Tokyo for further study. The Japanese wanted to study the latest surgical techniques concerning battlefield medicine from their German colleagues. 
The reason why Komori and his men wore German uniforms was probably to ensure that they were not mistaken, in Japanese uniforms, for Soviet Asian troops, as they were working in an active combat zone. However, their presence, manner of dress, and sleeve badge were clear violations of Japan's neutrality concerning the USSR, and if caught, would have caused a major diplomatic incident, perhaps even war between the two countries. As the military situation on the Eastern Front became more and more powerless for Nazi Germany, the Japanese embassy in Berlin found itself under threat. Reluctantly, General Oshima ordered its relocation in April 1945 to hotels at Bad Gastein in Austria. Major Komori's detachment of German uniformed doctors likewise transferred to Salzburg towards the end of the war, eventually joining the rest of the embassy personnel at Bad Gastein as US forces overran the region. Major Edward French, commanding a detachment consisting of a platoon from Troop A, 116th Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron Mechanized, U.S. 101st Cavalry Group, had captured Field Marshal Albert Kesselring and his entire staff on the 9th of May 1945, as German forces progressively laid down their arms in southern Germany and Austria. On the 10th of May, French handed over responsibility for guarding Kesselring to the U.S. 101st Airborne Division and received orders to go to Bad Gastein and capture the Japanese embassy located there, plus several top Nazi officials. Arriving in the town at 12.30 hours, French first met with the Swiss consul, who arranged a meeting with Baron von Dürnberg zu Hausen, Chief Protocol Officer, the Reich Chancellery, and Mr. Uchida, First Secretary of the Japanese Embassy. French posted checkpoints on the two ways out of the town and ordered that all Japanese remain in their hotels, and a complete list of their names be provided to him. French took custody of General Oshima and 135 Japanese diplomats and family members, including many military officers. Imperial Army and Navy attaches captured by the Americans included one rear admiral, a naval captain and a naval commander, plus an army colonel, three lieutenant colonels and a major from the engineering section. Major Komori and his little Japanese medical unit, now in civilian clothing, was also detained. All Japanese personnel were sent to Le Havre in France, where they were held initially in army tents, then requisitioned hotels under the control of the U.S. State Department, before being shipped to the U.S. for interrogation at Bedford Springs Hotel in Pennsylvania. They were then shipped back to Japan, with many, including Ambassador Oshima, standing trial in Tokyo. Major Komori returned to working as a doctor in Japan after the war and died in 1959 at the age of 58. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.